Well, thank you for bringing us this wonderful story. Um, I didn't bring it to you. Robin Simons did. Well, she did, but uh, she couldn't have done it without you. That's true. Yeah. Or um, this one over here. Or that one over there. Um, a really, a wonderful, a beautiful story of uh, of of you, of of transition, of uh, a love story, wonderful love story, a, lo a lovely story about family as well, and the meaning yes, of family, right. and and what that's all about. Um, a couple of quick things. I mean, one thing that jumps out at me and that I think is, makes you uh, such an effective advocate um, and educationally speaking, um, counseling younger people and people thinking about this, is your general fearlessness um, throughout. Um, the, the honesty and the fearlessness, I think, combined because there is a certain no bullshit quality involved. And I'm sure some of that comes from Butch because Butch was a no bullshit kind of person. Yeah, a lot of it comes from and uh, but that maintains as 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 softened as and as changed as that has been, um, it, it's maintained and the, and the fearlessness, which also seems to be coming from Butch, and that comes through, completely comes through, in even if it changes and, and alters, and that's uh, it, it's very refreshing because there's often a lot of bullshit around this issue, both in terms of fears on both sides of, of the equation, the people that are going through it, as well as the people around them that care for them. There's a lot of fear involved. And the fearlessness here made a big difference, I think, in the way the story is told. Uh, and that's a credit to you, certainly. And uh, to you too, Dan, in terms of both of you, uh, the changes you've had to make and that you, that you felt were necessary. Um, so I, I would say the fearlessness was, was throughout. And I just, just uh, on a technical basis, um, did Robin come to you to make the film? Uh, did you talk to her about it? Um, how, did that, how did that come about? This all started about... Keep the mic close to your face. Oh, it's not on. Mic's not on? Yeah. Right? There it is, yeah. As long as I put my big mouth against it, it'll be on. <laughs> um, how this exactly started, I can't remember. This was 20 years ago when it was started. Um, that, that film, that clip in the... Uh, that clip in the hospital was done about 20 years ago. Um, that was not my original surgery. That was one of my after surgeries. Uh, and then my nephew and Robin had some kind of a fallout over who owned the filming or the, the actual film. And it went for 10 years and uh, Robin had the film. And then one day, one day, she told me that one day she saw my name in print and she said, I remember Gloria. And bingo, the film was made 10 years ago, give or take. But it was originally started 20 years ago. Um, that's how that came about. And how long did it take to put it together after she resumed the project? Oh, uh, what was it, about a year and a half we worked on it? It must have been around two years. Two years? I know one thing. Uh, seemed like it was 18 years with all the uh, retakes that we had to do. <laughs> it's not easy walking all over the place in high heels and going up and down stairs. I don't mind doing it once, twice, but oh, the foot wasn't right, the leg wasn't right, the uh, step wasn't right, let's go up the stairs again. Eh, ridiculous. I hope I don't have to do it again. So it was completed, you say, more about 10 years ago? It was, it was a the, the original filming of the uh, one of the surgeries was 20 years ago. Right. Right, Dan? That was, about that was 2002. 2002. See how time goes by when you're having fun? <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. We do this all the time. <laughs> That's why we get along so well. See? Time goes by, you know, I'm when you're... You. you know. So, but then the actual, the filming that took two, and a, two years or so, when did, was that completed? What year was that completed? About 2014, 2013, give or take. Okay. Now, Dan and I are going to have one of our arguments. Now, wait a minute. The, the filming of that surgery with Reed, that was one of my nips and tucks. 2002. That was 2002. Right, right, right. In, you know... Well, which film, which of the film... Well, didn't she do some filming around 20 2013? 2013. She started. 
That's what happens when you get age on you. You can't remember jack point poo. <laughs> well, the, the only point I'm trying to make is that it was completed a couple years ago, and I just wanted to know, had anything changed since then? Since in terms of then? your family, in terms of anything else that's going on? Well, yes. Uh, my nephew and I have had a falling out because he had a falling out with Robin. And I was hearing things from Robin, who made the film. I was hearing things from Stephen, who uh, was making the film or whatever. And to make a long story short, yes, Stephen and I have had a falling out, which I do want to get back with him on. But Stephen is a very difficult person. Of course, I am too. I, I understand. I've called him twice. But he's had a falling out with his sister. He's had a falling out with me, and... Uh, well, this is families. This is obviously what, what happens in families. families. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions also. Um, so the, the transition, I mean, the, the, the happenstance of it, of you going through what you were going through, trying to get away from the, 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 the court order, right? right? And then um, your friend getting dragged for you guys. What was that about? When he, when he said, I've got some clothes, well, let's, let's get together and, and I'm going to put you on some girls' clothes. Oh, uh, that, that was uh, two girls that I was going with, having fun, so to speak. And we all went to Chicago and I didn't know they were going to take clothes. And they said, uh, the three girls are going out tonight. And I looked around, what the hell, two, uh, three girls? There's you two and me. Well, I turned out to be the third girl. And that was, that was different, that was fun. It does seem like it started the whole process to a certain extent. Um, no, what started it was Anita, when I was 11 years old. Oh, right, I remember that too. That's what started it. And uh, believe it or not, folks, all those years between when I was 11 and 12, and then I was up in Chicago with these two girls, I always thought about that. Um, I had a lot of fun back there when I was 11 and 12, but it wasn't in the cards at the time, but once I decided to finally get rid of my second wife, that was, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, that marriage, please. Um, I don't know, one thing led to another. I, it just seems and so I, odd I that... Put, I guess I put some fantasies that I had back then into reality. Yeah, I, I, I can see that completely, but it just seems so sort of circumstantial that your, girl, your girlfriends would say, hey, why don't you put on girls' clothes? Well, they must have had some... Did they have some idea that well, that would be appealing to you? my girlfriends and I were doing a lot of fooling around then, too. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I, <laughs> well, that's that's it's a marvelous thing. So the but the change the sort of the personality changes. Well, obviously there's a lot of butch in your personality still, and um, but and I think that maybe it's true for you too, Dan. That from your childhood there's a lot of that personality in you still as well, um, the original personality. But the changes that happened in terms of the softening that you mentioned, in terms of the way that you would fight and not bark in the ways that your nephew responded to you after you changed, right. in the way that you went out of your way to help people going through the same thing. Um, those are things that don't seem very butch-like, and, and not to play on the word, but they also, um, it seems that, that it, it came from the transition. It wasn't like it was there before the transition, it was after you'd made the transition, that happened more to you. Is that true? Well, Yes and no. I was always a nice person inside. Um, I had a bad reputation when I was in business, uh, and my reputation was in business. Um, I would go out and spend the most amount of money for salvage cars, knowing that I had the parts that people wanted for their cars. And my reputation was, if you can't get that part anywhere, go see the Jew up in Hollywood, He'll have it, but you'll pay through the nose for it. 
Well, but there was also that you were classified by people in the beginning of the film as a homophobe, as a bastard, as a cutthroat, as a liar, as a well, cheat, and all these different horrible things. A lot, a lot of that came from my sister. My sister and I never really did get along because she was extremely spoiled, uh, whatever. And then she fed that to my nephew, and he came up with a lot of that for the film. But it's, like I said, in business, I was known as go see the Jew, he'll, he'll have it, but you'll pay for it. Right. That's the attitude. Um, but but I was always somewhat of a nice person. Would you say, Dan? Come on, tell the truth. For the most part. For the most part. <laughs> I, like, I like the qualifier, somewhat, and for the most part. That, that covers a lot of ground. I, look, at, look at the things I did for you. Look how you're coming out. You're able to talk to all these people in the audience. I'm, that's true, very true. <laughs> Tell the truth, Dan. Well, you don't have to squeeze it out of them. Um, so, uh, and in, in terms of making the film, was it, a, was it the, was part of the process of making the film, was that what led you to more uh, advocacy that you're oh, doing? Oh, no, no, no. No, before the film, I was... You were already being more oh, of an advocate. I okay. was into, into politics, which, of course, now I can't talk about after the election. Um, but I was always into politics. I was always into groups. I was always into doing something. Or If somebody needed something done, go see Gloria. She's got the big mouth. She'll do it for you. I was always into that. Well, the, you may have been into that, but it, it, it seems to make a, a big difference. I think it makes a big difference for the people that you're helping, which is wonderful. And I want to give people in the audience a chance to ask questions if they have questions for Gloria or for Dan. Yeah, all the way to the back. In the back. Um, Gloria, did, did you ever see your boys again? <clears throat> no. No. And... Uh, I'd love to be able to see my boys again, but that's not going to happen. And uh, that would really have such a change on my life, a change on their lives. It would have been easier maybe to see my boys again if I wouldn't have done what I did. But uh, there are too many complications all the way around. So as I said in the movie, let sleeping dogs lie. But it hurts. You have no idea how it hurts. Right here. If this would be made into a major movie, who would like um, you, the stars you and Dan? Who would you like to portray, portray you to? Are you kidding? I have to play myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, was that really a question? <laughs> could you ask that question? But if you couldn't play it, if you weren't allowed to play it, who would you want? Oh, golly. <laughs> you know, I've got CRS disease, so it's kind of hard for me to answer that. Now, I'm sure everybody knows what CRS disease is. Can't remember. <laughs> so who would, be play who would be playing my part? Well, you could ask um, Shirley MacLaine. Oh, Shirley MacLaine. I've, see what I mean about CRS? I've had more people mention to me that I look like Shirley MacLaine. And uh, I even had some woman ask me, are you Shirley MacLaine? Yeah, but you look a little younger right now, so, you know, that could be the problem. I haven't well, seen how about, how about Gloria Estefan? No, she looks so completely different. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. And Dan? Dan, who Well, since I've always wanted to emulate either Patrick McNee or Cary Grant, and neither the one of them are alive, um, I guess I'll just have to end up playing me because there's nobody out there that, that I even idolize or care about. So well, Bradley I, I guess Cooper. maybe... Um, I can't think of anybody right now. Do we have anyone else? Oh, right here. When I was a little kid, uh, you know, we, my parents would have company come over. Uh -huh. And my older sister used to dress me up 
you know, as her younger sister. Right. And she would introduce me to the company as Rosie. So I, when the company was there, we pretended the whole time. Of course, I grew out of it. Right. But I think part of my life has been just the opposite, very macho, very masculine. I competed in uh, lumberjack events all over mm -hmm. the world. I got into the Guinness Book as the fastest splitter mm -hmm. in the world. But I, I'll never forget the feeling of being dressed up as Rosie. And, you know, I, I kind of, I'm kind of sad now that I gave it up. Darling, it's never, <laughs> it's never too late. It's never Clearly too never late. too late. If you, if you have a sex change now, you can be as pretty as me. <laughs> Come on, I've got you beat. I'm 81. Oh, are you serious? Serious uh -huh. is a heart attack. But you were in your 60s when you had the surgery, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And when, the, when one of the parts was made, I was, what, uh, 79. The, uh, when they did the filming in the um, secondhand shop, I was 79. So, and, well, and, to, and to let you know that the oldest person I know that had a sex change operation was somebody I met who was 82. So see, you have, you have time. Well, there we go. Never we, too late to we all have time. Wait, one more question, and then we gotta go. Yes. I don't know about my uh, children's mother, but I do know my second wife finally moved. She's in the cemetery. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, in okay, one quick question in the back, because we do have to wrap it up. I just had a quick question. I, I once saw a documentary about two men who had the operation, and they, and they actually felt like uh, deep down it really didn't change what they felt, that it wasn't fully satisfying, so one went back and one remained. But my question for you is that uh, did the surgery was it just overnight it worked, you, you felt fully male, you felt fully female, or is there still something that you're kind of chasing inside that feels not fully female male? Well, I'm not chasing anything, but I do know one thing. As I said in the movie, I never took any shit off anybody as a man. I'm certainly not going to do it as a woman. So there's a lot of butch still in me, which uh, <laughs> I'm glad. Now, he would like for me to be more femme. Um, Dan, I try. What can I tell you? I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very, very much for being with us today and a wonderful film. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.